The second study I'd like to um, document is a, one that was just released last year at this time in nutrition metabolism. Dietary, dietary carbohydrates restriction in type 2 diabetes, mellitus patients, and metabolic syndrome, a time for a critical appraisal by numerous author, authors, including Richard Bernstein and Mary Vernon, who I've talked about already, Jeff Bullock and Eric Westman, another two notable low-carb scientists. And I'll post the link in the in video description. And they, point, they conducted a 63 patient study in multi-centers over the course of 12 months. There's 21 low-carb patients, 21 control patients, and 21 high-carb patients. And over the course of one year, they developed, they saw five specific things that favored the low-carb lifestyle over the high-carb lifestyle. The first one was that the carbohydrate restrictions improved the glycemic control, the primary target of nutritional therapy and reducing insulin fluctuations. A striking one of the things they noted was that the amount of low-carb followers were able to severely reduce or eliminate the need for any sort of insulin or diabetic medication. 17 of the 21 either severely reduced it or eliminated it. The second one was that the low-carb followers saw a more severe weight loss and maintained it over the 12-month period than did the low-fat diet followers. Third, the substitution of fat for carbohydrates is generally beneficial for the markers and incidence of cardiovascular disease. Contrary to the popular diet heart hypothesis, which states that dietary fat is the cause for uh, cardiovascular disease, in this study it showed the exact opposite. There's a prob there's a probably no dietary outcome as reliable as, redu as the reduction in triglycerides due to carbohydrate restrictions to improving cardiovascular disease. That's a quote from the study. Here's another quote. Replacement of saturated fats with carbohydrates, however, is almost always deleterious. Again, the idea that carbohydrate is a control element determining the fate of ingested lipids is overriding. Therefore, if you include the, the eating of saturated fats with the eating of carbohydrates, you're almost always going to have cardiovascular disease. In this case, what this showed was the elimination of the or severe reduction of the low carb or the carbohydrates in one diet improved this, the categories or the markers for cardiovascular disease. It was the exact opposite. So it's not so much that the fat was the bad guy in this situation. It was the overabundance of carbohydrates in one's diet was the bad guy in this situation. Carbohydrate, the fourth one was the carbohydrate restrictions improves the features for the metabolic syndrome. If you're like me, you're wondering what the metabolic syndrome is. I wasn't clued in on this until I read this article. But here, let me read this. An important idea guiding the current meta medical thinking is that clustering of seemingly disparate physiological states, obesity, atherogenic dyslipidemia, hyperglycemia, and hypertension, term metabolic syndrome, suggest a common underlying cause. Inherent in this concept lies the possibility that treating one risk factor or disease may confer some benefit or risk to the other disease. A recent review showed that carbohydrate restrictions improves all of these markers. So, simply by lowering your carbohydrate restrictions, which Atkins diet certainly does, improved all the category, all the markers for this metabolic syndrome. It improved hypertension, and it improved hyperglycemia, improved obesity, as I'm certainly a case in um, study of. <laughs> so, and fifth, the beneficial effects of the carbohydrate restrictions do not require weight loss. All right, I can hear the low-fat followers now. Well, it was just simply because these low-carb followers lost so much weight. That was why everything got better. Well, you know, all things considered, I'm glad I lost the weight. But you know what? I think even if I hadn't lost the weight or if I hadn't, hadn't needed to lose the weight in the first place, this would have been a beneficial lifestyle for me to follow. In fact, there's two studies in which they did this. One in which they kept the body mass constant throughout normal weight men 
or patients with type 2 diabetes, a very low carbohydrate diet resulted in dramatic improvements in triglycerides and HDL cholesterol with minimal change in the body mass. Therefore, these people stayed the same weight, i.e. these people were at goal weight already, and their HDL still went up and the triglycerides still dropped through the, through the floor. The second one, equipment experiments in which changes in macronutrients and weight loss are separated in time show that both eucloric carbohydrate reduction leads to greater improvements in atherogenic lipid markers, both triglycerides, HTLs, and the mean LDL particle size, even in the presence of higher saturated fats. A low-fat diet, however, required weight loss to achieve the same effect to achieve effective improvements in the lipid profile, i.e. in order to get better lipid panels, better heart health, in the low carb follower you didn't need to lose weight. I.e. if you're at goal already maybe you should be thinking about going low carb rather than going low fat. In a low, low fat scenario they actually had to drop their weight and potentially start eating muscle mass before they start seeing the same improvements. Okay, great. I can hear all the, I've read all kinds of documents. That's all great, but we don't know what the long-term health effects of a low-carb diet is. That was where the final piece of the puzzle came in today. I read the study regarding a low-carbohydrate diet in type 2 diabetics and stable improvement of body weight and glycemic control during the 44 months follow-up. These two researchers took a 20% carbohydrate diet, which is still rather significant. That's in the 100 to 150 carbo grams of carbohydrates per day range for a 200 pound individual. Was, they did this period and they said it was significantly superior over a 55 to 60% carbohydrate diet with regards to both body weight and glycemic control in two groups of obese diabetic patients observed closely over six months in the intervention group and loosely followed later in 12 months, 22 months, and now finally in 44 months. Their body weights over that period significantly dropped. They dropped by 4.3 kilograms. That was their mean body weight loss. Their HbA1c, the initial HbA1c in 2003 for the low carb group was over 8.0. At the end of the six month study, it was 6.6. .6. By the end of the 44 months, it remained stable at 6.8. The cardiovascular disease markers, only 8.5 of these diabetic patients who would be typically a high risk for a cardiovascular disease happening to them due to their diabetes, only 8.5 the low carb following group suffered some sort of CVD or MI episode during this period. Of the remaining control group, because a lot of these control groups ended up going low carb, of the remaining control group, four out of these five patients suffered, 80% suffered several and repeated MI or heart infarctions followed by heart failure. In fact, two of them had actually died from heart disease. Of the control groups that also started of these of these of this diabetic group, over 67% of them migrated to the low carb following. Of these people that have migrated six months later to the low carb diet, two of them are completely diabetes free, i.e., their HbA1c is below 5%, and no longer take any medication whatsoever for their diabetes. In conclusion. They say, there is now little evidence for the claim that a fat-reduced diet for weight reduction has any particular value beyond calorie counting. On the other hand, since randomized studies have shown that carbohydrate restrictions with ad libitum energy intake, which is not restricted energy intake, confers significant benefits with regard to weight loss in obese persons. Following up, considering the solid evidence for the negative effect of hyperglycemia on diabetes complications as well as the cardiovascular disease, the present high-carbohydrate dietary advice resulting in unnecessary hyperglycemia and insulin resistance seems difficult to support. And for the diabetic patients, 
current dietary recommendations seem to be a major part of, the, of their problem rather than being part of the solution. Carbohydrate restrictions, however, reverses or neutralizes all aspects of the metabolic syndrome. So they're, they're saying, the story you've been told, been told all this time, I, you have to maintain your high, carbohydrates high and then maintain that high, um, maintain your glucose level by high levels of insulin injections is only exacerbating the problems. The real solution is keeping yourself on an even kill all day long and just maintaining that even kill. You don't need, you don't need to rise it up at every dinner time and then have to add the insulin to drop it back down. And are people listening? They are. Finally, they are. In 2008, the American Diabetic Association, in their uh, diabetes clinical practice recommendation, recommended to doctors that a low-carb lifestyle was indeed a good and practical thing to follow for their patients. In 2009, they reaffirmed that once again, saying that low-carb lifestyle was indeed beneficial for weight loss for their diabetic patients. There's being a lie sold to the diabetic population. The lie is being sold that they need to, one, be insulin dependent for these type 2 diabetics, that there is no hope that they may be able to reverse the case. They're being sold that they can keep eating the high carbohydrate foods and man managing their insulins by more higher and higher insulin injections using more and more insulin to do their work i'm not an i'm not a doctor obviously i'm going to be posting all the links for all my research in my video description read that documentation see if it makes sense to you take it back to your doctor because you know what going as mary ross vernon said the result to following a low carbohydrate diet can be significant. You might be able to eliminate most of your insulin injections within three days. Be under a doctor's care if you're going to, if you're diabetic and you're going to follow a low carb lifestyle. But in reading this documentation, it would make complete and sense to me. And I'm making that recommendation to my family members who are who have been diabetic in the past. I wish my grandma would have realized this when she was first diagnosed with, with diabetes. She's no longer with us. And I'm just hoping that this can reach somebody and touch somebody and, and make a difference in their life. So thanks for watching and hopefully next time it might be on a little happier subject. So take care.